One feature in PowerPoint that doesn't receive a lot of hype is the actions function. And actions are similar to animation in that they allow you to program movement into your slide deck. In this case, the action that we're going to be exploring is jumping slides. This is useful if you want to create something like a Jeopardy game board for your class. Maybe you want to create a branching scenario or you want to create a slide deck that has practice questions that based on the student's response to the question, they will receive, they will receive feedback, maybe some remediation that you've built into the slides. In this case, what we're going to be doing is creating a table of contents for a slide deck. So let's say hypothetically, every class I present a different set of slides. And then when it comes time to study for the exam, I want to consolidate all of those slide decks into one file. So that way the students don't have to go through many different files to study and prepare. They have everything that they need in one slide deck. So I'm going to create a table of contents that allows the student to jump to different topics that are in the slide deck. So you can see here that I have set up a simple slide. I've named it table of contents. I have provided some instruction on how to use the slide. They need to click the arrow to visit the slide. And the topics that I have identified I created a shape and then I added the text to the shape. The action that we will be adding so that students can click and jump to a slide will be in the arrow. So first I have to identify what slides are we jumping to? And I've placed those in my notes so that way I don't have to keep scrolling through my thumbnails to find them. So we'll be jumping to slide 5, 23, and then 29. So to do this, I'm going to click on my arrow icon and then insert action hyperlink to slide and then slide five. And I'll repeat that process for each of these. So for the next one, it's going to be slide 23. And then for the next one, it will be slide 29. Perfect. Just to make this as user friendly as possible, and because I know that sometimes we just have a tendency to click without reading the instructions, I'm also going to add the action to the text that's within the shape because sometimes we may just click the text, again, foregoing the instructions. And what happens with this is that the slide deck will work as designed. So if I click public speaking as communication instead of the arrow, it's simply going to advance to slide number two. And that may confuse me. That may make me feel like, well, maybe I don't understand how this works and I won't be able to utilize the table of contents. So just in case there is an erroneous click, I'm going to go ahead and highlight public speaking as communication. Again, insert action, hyperlink to, and then I'm going to choose my slide number. And as you can see, this actually turns the text into a hyperlink. Um, if for aesthetic reasons that blue bothers you because it is unlike the other colors in your slide deck, you can simply recolor the text. That's fine. And I'll repeat this process again.
Now when we play the slideshow, when we click on the text or the icon, we will advance to the slide that is connected to the action or linked to the action. So again, slide five, slide 23, and slide 29. Now what happens if we jump to a slide and then we want to get back to the table of contents? Well, for that, we will need to add an icon to our slides that allows the students or whoever's working with the slide deck to head back to the table of contents. To do this, we're going to head into our slide master. Now that I'm in the slide master, I need to add a clickable icon to the content layout slides. I'm going to head to my first content layout slide and click insert icons and search for an icon that looks like a home. I'm going to move the icon to the lower right hand corner of my slide and I'm going to recolor the icon to white just to match the aesthetics of the slide presentation and also because some of my content slides have black elements and you would not be able to see the black icon on the black shape. Now to be extra user friendly, I'm going to add a text box that provides some instruction for students so they know what to do. Click the home icon to return to the table of contents. Now I will turn my home icon into a clickable action. I'm going to say insert action, hyperlink two, and then slide one. Now being a little lazy or efficient, I'm just going to copy this layout and add it to my other slides. When I exit my slide master, I can see that this has become a part of my content slides. In this case, I found a slide where it's not there. And the reason for that is because I have a shape that is actually on the slide. It's not using the slide master. So finding this, I want to make sure that I apply the correct layout and then I will have my um, table of contents button. So you can just review your slides, make sure that they have the correct layouts applied. Now to finish, I'm going to see my slideshow and just make sure everything works the way that I've designed it. So I'm going to head to public speaking as communication and then I am going to go ahead and return to the table of contents by clicking on my home icon. And you can see that it's working as designed. Hopefully you found this tip helpful and that you can create some really cool um, clickable actions within your slideshow to give users a different and more effective experience.